Salutations, my name's Neil Cross, and after specializing in Autodesk software for 25 years, mate, I'm here to tell you just WTF is Autodesk Inventor. Well, mate, it all started back in 1995 when Autodesk announced a brand new design and manufacturing focused application that they called Mechanical Desktop, which at the time, mate, that was built on AutoCAD when he's 13, but ultimately, this just couldn't compete at the time with the likes of SolidWorks and Solid Edge, who back in the late 90s, at a time when the industry was rapidly approaching a conversion boom over to the use of 3D design, well, they were spanking things. So as it became blindingly apparent to Autodesk and everyone else that Mechanical Desktop was gonna get an absolute toweling from the likes of SolidWorks and all their competitors, well, Autodesk had to act and they needed to act fast. So in the late 90s, Autodesk span up a brand new project with the release one being codenamed Rubicon, and Autodesk Inventor was indeed born. And the first customers began receiving their copies of Autodesk Inventor on September 20th, 1999, with Inventor clearly being a response to the rise in popularity and potential dominance of SolidWorks and other competitors in the design and manufacturing space that Autodesk really wanted a slice of the pie of. So just WTF is Autodesk Inventor now. Well, today, Autodesk Inventor has had around 28 full version releases between version one and where it is today at version 2023. And it's now a fully matured, professional grade 3D mechanical design, simulation, visualization, and documentation tool for engineers and designers. And Inventor includes parametric, direct edit, Freeform modeling tools, as well as having multi CAD translation capabilities and native DWG drawing creation tools. But like all Autodesk software these days, it's a subscription or a token flex use based service, and it's going to cost you around $2,300 per year to use. But it's also included in their design collection bundle, which is around $3,000 per year. Now, Autodesk, well, you know, they love their buzzwords, as I'm sure you know, and their flavor of the air phrases, and one that they used to bang around all the time, mate was digital prototyping. You might remember that one. Digital prototyping? Digital prototyping. 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 And as much as the repetitiveness of hearing that being slung around all the time used to boil my piss. A digital prototype. It quite accurately described what Inventor existed to do. Product designers, mechanical engineers, drafters, well, they used Inventor to create 3D digital prototypes of a product before it was actually physically built or manufactured. And Autodesk actually got that nailed. And Inventor has an absolute arsenal of tools to assist engineers with running checks and validations on the designs on that digital prototype inside Inventor, which as I'm sure you can appreciate, mate, is far preferable to spending a liver and kidney on making physical prototypes only to find that the front keeps falling off. Senator Collins, thanks for coming in. It's a great pleasure, thank you. This ship that was involved in the incident off Western Australia this week... Yeah, the one the front if... fell off? Yeah. Yeah, that's not very typical. I'd like to make that point. Was this tanker safe? Well, I was thinking more about the other ones. The ones that are safe? Yeah, the ones the front doesn't fall off. Well, if this wasn't safe, why did it have 80,000 tonnes of oil on it? Well, I'm not saying it wasn't safe. It's just perhaps not quite as safe as some of the other ones. Why? Well, some of them are built so the front doesn't fall off at all. Well, wasn't this built so the front wouldn't fall off? Well, obviously not. How do you know? Well, because the front fell off. What sort of standards are these uh, oil tankers built to? Oh, very rigorous maritime engineering standards. What sort of thing? Well, the front's not supposed to fall off for a start. And what other things? Well, there are uh, regulations governing the uh, materials that they can be made of. What materials? Well, cardboard's out. And? No cardboard derivatives. Like paper? No paper. No string, no sellotape. Rubber? No, rubber's out. Um, they've got to have a steering wheel. There's a minimum crew requirement. What's the minimum crew? Oh, one, I suppose. Senator Collins, why did the front book fall off? Well, a wave hit it. A wave hit it? A wave hit the ship. Is that unusual? Oh yeah. At sea, chance in a million. John Clark. But what makes Inventor different to the likes of something like, I don't know, Blender? Well, quite a lot, mate. But it all starts with the file structure. So Inventor data sets, well, they're, they're kind of built out like parts and assemblies. Think of, think of like a Lego helicopter. Inventor's got IPT and IAM files, which are your parts and your assemblies. So you'd model up like a Lego block is an IPT file. Then you'd place and position each block into an IAM file, which is your assembly file, with each significant part of the helicopter having its own, what they call a sub-assembly. So you'd have a sub-assembly IAM file for like the landing skid of the helicopter, the main rotor, the engine, and then you'd put all of those IAM files together to make one main top level IAM assembly file for the helicopter itself, which is often known 
as the GA or the General Arrangement Assembly. And all of these blocks would then be numerically itemized to form a bill of materials of the helicopter used for purchasing or to assist with the build process, with the final output usually being a documented drawing, some kind of 2D documentation, which is essentially just orthographic 2D views of the 3D model, which is automatically generated. And that was one of the big benefits of 3D in the early days, was that you don't have to draft things manually. You just place a 3D model onto a 2D drawing sheet and Inventor is going to create the views for you automatically. Now, as for the modeling itself, well, this is where Inventor, as a specialized mechanical design tool, differentiates itself from the likes of Blender. It's got familiar tools like organic freeform modeling and easy to use direct editing, but it's the parametric modeling that sets it apart and in many ways makes it computer aided design. Parametric means that basically you're inputting design intent into the model by way of dimensions, which look like dimensions, but they're not. They're actually called parameters. And those parameters control the physical size of the model and the relationships between certain things inside the model. And parameters can be linked together or driven by formulas or expressions. And on a larger scale, this can result in what's known as adaptivity, where an edit to one block or part can have a, a knock-on or an impact effect onto another block or another part in a larger assembly. But yeah, Inventor is a bit more than just Lego blocks, right? Lego, it's more than that. It's a specialized tool for mechanical engineering. So, I mean, it's got feature sets specifically for that purpose. So if you're needing to design, I don't know, a massive product that's got tons of steel work in it, for example, and you need a materials list, why model each part manually? Inventor's got a frame generator accelerator in there with global standards for box work and tubing with corner treatments. It's got millions of standards for nuts, bolts, and screws from the content center. It's got gear generators. It's got spring generators, shafts, pulleys, all with integrated simulation and calculation sheets. Advanced users of Inventor can create table-driven product variations using iParts and iAssemblies, or even the insanely powerful iLogic, which is kind of like pro sort of programmable if this then that style design automation. And then the digital prototyping theme really begins to ring true if you properly assign accurate materials to each part because Inventor is then going to give you true dynamic product weights and center of gravities all in session. And then of course, you can throw things over to the integrated finite element analysis or the FEA environment and then start running some stress tests on your designs. Hell, if you've got the time and patience of a ragdoll cat mate, you can even dip your toe into Inventor's dynamic simulation engine, which is a specialized tool set that builds functional mechanisms based on real world influences to create true kinematic simulation. So whether it's a company designing compressor impellers, huge subsea vehicles, concrete mixers, the next hype loop transport. Hang on a minute, <laughs> did, did she just hit a constraint failure whilst being filmed? <laughs> why, why would you keep that in the final cut? Like no, nobody would notice it. Anyway, even automotive companies like BAC, whilst designing the mono sports car, they use Inventor in their workflow for aspects of their mechanical engineering. So whilst this isn't even scratching the surface of what Inventor's got to offer, hopefully it does give you a fundamental idea of just WTF Inventor is and who it's for. And if you think that might be for you, mate, well, I've put a link in the description to the Autodesk store if you'd like to subscribe to Inventor through my channel. Now, obviously, confusion does ensue at Autodesk's own doing when it comes to Inventor because of their relentless, overwhelming and confusing mixed messaging over where Inventor sits with regards to Fusion 360. So if you are confused, I've compared the two up here. That might help, <laughs> but in conclusion, uh, even though they did it again and they neglected to show a single frame of Inventor in the 2023 Design and Manufacturing Corporate Showreel, which is their uh, their outward showing of their, their manufacturing prowess uh, in, all in one video. Fact is, Inventor is their flagship design and manufacturing professional grade solution, even if that means I have to beat them across the head with it until the message sinks in. Thanks for watching. That was WTF is Autodesk Inventor. It's the first one in hopefully a series. If you want to see more like this, please do let me know in the comments down below uh, or just support the channel by hitting the like button and subscribing or buying an Autodesk license through my link in the description down below. Thanks very much again for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. Peace.